And yeah, just radio in general, listening to something in your car, um, it feels very kind of nostalgic and authentic. You're, you're definitely <laughs> yes. like in a certain yes. space, certain state of mind. So, you know, you're really capturing somebody when there's not much else that can be distracting them. So that part of it is, is always really cool to me about audio. Hello and welcome to Growth Masterminds, the podcast for growth marketers. My name is John Gutsier. In a recent poll in a webinar that I emceed, one thing advertisers almost unanimously agreed to was that a key priority for them was diversification. What's that look like? Today, we're chatting with someone who can maybe help us with that, helps understand what that looks like beyond just more partners. Her name is Angelina Marmorato, and she's a VP at Lemma, which calls itself an omni-channel network for emerging media. Welcome, Angelina. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good, good, good. You're looking so pro there. You're in the booth. You got the anechoic surrounding material there, headphones, perfect, big mic. It's great. Yeah, um, I'm ready. I, it's awesome. I get a lot of pitches for, for growth masterminds. And when I get them, I typically go to like somebody's website and I take a look, what do they do? What's, what, what's interesting here. And the first thing I saw on your website was omni-channel platform for emerging media, which caught my attention. What's that mean? Yeah. So yeah, we are Lemma. Um, we are an omni-channel solution for emerging media. What that means to us is channels that are, you know, either going from more traditional methods to more digital methods um, or either brand new things, brand new technologies that, you know, didn't exist before, but are, are now entering the space and are potentially things that marketers can use. Cool. Maybe let's list some of the things that you consider to be emerging media that you focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Lemma, the company started focusing on digital out of home. Uh, the reason for that is a lot of screens, well, screens now, but a lot of out of home was, you know, print uh, or mm -hmm. posters uh, back in the day. Um, and so for that reason, the goal was really to bring more of that online and then also bring it more into the programmatic ecosystem to allow, you know, growth marketers to really get the tracking that they need to make it a worthwhile media. Um, so digital out of home is a key. Another key for us is CTV. Um, this, the proliferation of smart TVs has, has made that possible um, via the TV as well. Um, and then finally, you know, I would consider audio, particularly if you're thinking about trackable audio in the programmatic mm -hmm. kind of ecosystem, I would say that's still emerging too. Um, so yeah, those are the, the three key ones I would talk about. Cool. It's super interesting when you consider out of home, right? Because if you look back in the, should I say the dark ages? I don't know. The old times of out of home, right? You're right. You, you bought like a poster by the side of the road. A poster, I say post, it's a billboard, right? Massive and huge. It's probably you bought it for at least a couple of weeks, maybe a month. There's probably some activation cost because it's like something has to be printed. Something has yeah. to be applied, right? And then, and then we got more sophisticated and you had those kinds. You remember those kinds of billboards that had like sort of a tri triangular pieces that went down and you could flip and they had images on each of those three sides of the triangle right and then so you could have three different advertisers on one yeah, billboard that's right and yeah. now of course it's digital and it's it's something that i mean app marketers never would have even really dreamed about kind of maybe a decade ago maybe more than that right but as you're getting more mainstream for maybe a mobile game or maybe a mobile app or a digital subscription thing via mobile uh, we're seeing more and more go for stuff like that that's interesting podcasting is also interesting. Talk about what you're doing on audio, which isn't just podcasting, by the way, I'm sure there's digital radio and there's other things like that. Talk about that. What are you seeing there? What's exciting? What's interesting there? Yeah, I think if we talk about digital radio for a second, um, that is one that's exciting because it has for so long been over, over the air, if you will. Um, it's really becoming more digital and for the first time, a lot of the major players like iHeartRadio, et cetera, um, are making a lot of their inventory available programmatically um, so that performance buyers can buy them via the platforms they're already using for their campaigns. That mm -hmm. makes it so much easier to apply the same targeting, um, get more measurement and insights, um, and, and truly make it more of a channel to where you've got, you know, measurable impact that, you know, you can actually feel like, <laughs> hey, this can kind of be a performance channel. So, um, I think for that reason, that one's super interesting. And then, you know, like touching on podcasts, it's a different experience. It's unique. 
um obviously we're doing one right now this is like a niche audience like people kind of know what to expect when they're watching and um that offers a really unique opportunity to really get in with niche audiences identify podcasts that really make sense for your audience um and so i think the you know roi on that is is often really high just based on you know the the specificness of it it, it it's actually really interesting to me if you think about radio in general because I have an electric car and, and so for, for multiple years, um, you know, I'm, I'm streaming all my, my, my music, I'm streaming my podcast or whatever. I'm not actually using any radio whatsoever, but I recently also got a mini and it's not electric and it's old. It's like 2015 mm -hmm. or something. I guess that's not very old, but I love a mini. I had a mini back in the day and I had to get another one. We wanted two cars just for ease and convenience and all that stuff. And my mom wasn't driving anymore. So I got it. And guess what? It's super old fashioned. Doesn't even have a screen. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm back in the dark ages, but it has reintroduced me to radio. And yeah. there's something interesting about radio that connects you to your community in a way that if you're just streaming all your music from Apple or Spotify or Google or Amazon or whatever that you're not getting and, and now making that addressable is also interesting. Absolutely. I think radio and local news are both like super local based kind of forms of media that have both all of a sudden kind of been available to performance marketers through these pr programmatic channels. Um, and it's super exciting. And yeah, just radio in general, listening to something in your car, um, it feels very kind of nostalgic and authentic. You're, you're definitely yes. like in a certain <laughs> space, certain state of mind. So, you know, you're really capturing somebody when there's not much else that can be distracting them. So that part of it is, is always really cool to me about audio. Believe it or not, I even have some nostalgia when there's like a staticky radio station and like listening to music and that. I mean, it's like really old. It puts me back like 10, 20 years ago or something like that. It's crazy. Uh, so that's that stuff is is all pretty cool. And the, the hyper -lo local aspect of it is important, right? And maybe not so much if you're like a, uh, a mobile game, but let's say you're uh, a delivery app. Let's say yeah. you're uh, Uber Eats or, or somebody like that, Lyft or something. That's super hyper mobile, right? I mean, you know, you, you, food delivery, those sorts of things, they're hyper local and you want to target a hyper local audience. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool what you can do is something like a, a delivery app. Um, you can get super local in your targeting, you know, down to zip code pretty easily, maybe even down to like a lat long radius if you really want to. Um, but with that in mind, you know, if you're around a stadium and you know it's game day, like, hey, you can make your creative about that. Um, and so it, to me, it offers a lot of unique ways to, to do cool things with creative and with audio, it's like, it's a little bit less of a, um, creative, you know, push to get, to get that done. You don't have to have video and visuals the same way. So it can be, I like, really like when I see, you know, uh, some of the guys will do fun marketing things around like location, particularly mm -hmm. the delivery app. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. cool. It's a good way to keep people involved too. Cool. I want to hit the sort of uh, third leg of the tripod that you mentioned off the top and that's CTV. You mentioned that's, that's exploding and that is absolutely exploding. And that's, that's, it takes so many different forms, right? There is the smart TV. There's a set top box, which is what it comes on often, but not always, especially with newer TVs. There's people watching TV movies on their phones, especially in certain countries, but also uh, kids uh, wherever, wherever they, 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 when they can't get the big screen on the wall, maybe, maybe they're even preferentially here. Right. So talk about CTV and what's exciting and interesting there for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, mobile is a big part of kind of the TV ecosystem or it has become that, you know, inter streaming and, you know, quote unquote, TV content is suddenly on the mobile device everywhere. Um, so that makes kind of an, an, a few different angles for marketers that that really enjoy mobile. Um you know, you can really kind of cost effectively get access to somebody watching super high production quality on their mm -hmm. on. But since it's on their iPad, um, it actually comes with a lot lower CPM. So, you know, what if you're a performance marketer that kind of think, you know, you can do targeting like that on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just like one example. But yeah, overall, um, it's it's really interesting and it continues to get more interesting as, you know, more of the OEMs like Samsung and LG get more involved. Um, you know, if, if you have a, a new TV and you set it up, um, you'll see that 
it immediately once you sign up and give them all your information of who you are, <laughs> um, it, it quickly you know it turns into a live TV all of a sudden. Um, yes. So they're they're really capitalizing on that and as such kind of enter a new audience to this kind of world of digital TV. I've actually talked to some mobile marketers who are used to the super competitive, super fast moving, super expensive world of, let's say, programmatic SDK advertising, that sort of stuff, uh, or, or mobile on, on, on Meta, Google, those sorts of things. And they've started dipping their toes in CTV and said, oh, this is interesting. It's like a blue ocean area because there's not as much competition. And the competition that is there isn't as smart as yep. those who are like in mobile and they're buying and optimizing and going nuts and crazy. And that the level of competition is is, is insane. So they've, they, they've talked about that as being a real opportunity. Uh, n nothing stays that way for long, obviously, because more people rush in and it gets tougher and tougher. So we started off with omni-channel, which is kind of almost in some sense, it feels all like an old fashioned word. We heard that <laughs> it's gotta be like a decade ago. Right. And people are talking yeah. omni-channel marketing. Right. And guess what? Identifiers started going away <laughs> and privacy came bigger deal and Apple came with ATT and GDPR happened. And we don't hear that much about it, but what does it mean to you in reference to these kind of three platforms? Yeah, no, it's a good point. Um, I think, what's cool about so each of these platforms is a little bit different but if you think about um ctv that's traditionally it's a big screen you know it offers a chance for performance marketers to really make a big impression um and you only need 15 seconds so you know there's also a, an, an amazing amount of creative kind of ai these days that you don't have to have you know a huge budget to go produce a spot mm -hmm. um and it, you're also able to like really granularly target, you know, who you're, who you're doing. You, it's also, you can retarget it on CTV. So, I mean, Imagine the options are really, yeah, iOS. <laughs> I know it's like, you can do it the reverse way. So it's, the options are really becoming limitless there. Um, and then I think if you think about something like digital out of home, that's something where, um, you know, I, I would say like performance marketers would never touch that in the past, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, mm -hmm. um, we're getting to a point where it's easy and it's cost effective um, because it's now digital. There's a, you know, a huge amount of impressions all of a sudden. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can really cost effectively almost like around the same as a display ad, get some out of home spots. So, you know, if, if you're price conscious, it, these are still good channels. Um, and, and I think the more that uh, marketers are kind of like first movers, they're going to figure this stuff out. Um, so like you said, it's, it's good to be ahead and not behind in these. And there's so many things you can learn both from targeting and measurement and just more about your consumers and what they react to. I always bring up in this scenario, what I heard from a digital marketer for a, um, direct to consumer startup, uh, actually was a startup inside a massive brand, like a $50 billion brand. And she talked about surround sound marketing. And the idea there was uh, nobody does anything because of one stimulus, right? Or generally, generally to make us do something, there's two or three or five or six or 15 or 20 different things, reasons, touches, whatever that yeah. impel us to take an action, download an app, buy a thing, whatever it might be, right? And, and the more significant it is, maybe the more it takes, but not always. And so that was surround sound marketing for her. And that meant that she was going to be in somebody's face. I, I don't mean that in a negative way, obviously, <laughs> but she was going to be in somebody's attention sphere uh, in multiple media in, on multiple platforms. And that way kind of achieved a, a kind of like uh, ubiquity almost like you know, and yeah. achieve a normalcy maybe for an emerging brand or an emerging company, even if that was hyper local and hyper targeted, you were like, you remember people used to say somebody was world famous in London, right? If they were like a pre-digital influencer right? <laughs> yeah. sort of thing, you could be world famous in, I don't know, um, Albuquerque, New Mexico or something like that because you're yeah. everywhere, right? Uh, that's an interesting way to look at it. I thought. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can hit these people at multiple places at multiple times. You can really hyper locally kind of explode in one DMA if you want to. Um, that can be an interesting tactic. Um, and yeah, each of these touch points throughout the day of where somebody is consuming an ad are, are different. They're data points. Performance marketers love data points. <laughs> like this is just more and more information to fill kind of that overarching like consumer journey. Um, 
both pre-purchase and after and during the experience and how can we re-engage. Um, to me, some of these channels are really exciting for ways to kind of continue the relationship too. And, you know, going more into almost like loyalty and, and just keeping folks engaged versus, you know, you signed up and then you forgot about it kind of thing. Interesting. Interesting. And for retargeting, as you mentioned, because sometimes you can't retarget technically. You can't like say this person was in my app. I'm going to retarget them there, but you knew you had a certain number. And I've seen, I've seen people recently talk about they retarget via cheap banner ads. Well, this is another means that you can retarget. In other words, get another impression, get another crack at the, at, at, at convincing somebody to come back or to, or to, to, to use your, your service or something like that. Okay, two things I want to talk about yet, and and probably we'll, we'll we'll reference each of the three major platforms that we've been talking about. The one is kind of gotchas when marketers come into these spaces; they're not used to these spaces, they haven't thought of these spaces, maybe they've never even heard of some of these spaces. That's unlikely, but it's possible. And the second thing is measurement on these spaces. So let's start with the first one: some gotchas. As you're moving into, let's say, CTV and you've never done CTV before, what are some things you got to remember, you got to know? What are some challenges that you're going to experience? And what are some, I don't know, hidden pitfalls that you've seen people fall into? Yeah, definitely. I think the first thing to consider with just television and CTV in general is it's not a soup, you can't click on it, right? Um, so, Thinking of how somebody is working on that, but yes, you're right. Yeah, no, I'm about to get to it. It's like, we're getting there. You know, there, I think there's a stat that like um, QR codes is one method. It's not as clean as something like Roku's ability to, you know, you know, if you're in the Roku ecosystem and you click on the ad, then they can, you know, send your information in for you. Mm -hmm. um, they've also got kind of shoppable ads and are really getting to a place where um, there's a cool kind of new product that Roku has where CPG brands can basically have ads. And then if you scan the QR code, it'll take you straight to their product, like on Instacart. So it's mm -hmm. like a way for the Instacart app to partner mm -hmm. with these brands. You know, it's like going beyond what, you know, it's going into trade marketing and loyalty marketing. Um, so anyway, going back to what I was originally saying though, you have to think more about what do you want from, what do you, what action do you want from this person mm -hmm. from watching that ad? Um, and sometimes you're going to get it. And if you want something that's a real kind of more call to action, you've got to think more about something like QR codes or a different way, um, or working more directly with somebody like Roku, you know, or as old as the Hills, um, a, a coupon code, <laughs> totally. this, right. Absolutely. And you've got track of it. I have literally talked to some of the most sophisticated digital marketers on the planet who are still using things like that. And they use things because guess what, you know, maybe 5% of people do it or, 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 or maybe 10%, maybe 1%, but it's trackable. And then they can extrapolate, yep. they can model for more. Right. And so there's interesting things there. And you can bet that if Roku is working with Shopify on shoppable CTV ads and other things like that, just imagine what Amazon's going to come out with on prime, right? I mean, come yep. on, that yep. is, that's a gold mine there that they're just sitting on. Prime is huge. Amazon is huge. The number of products are insane. They're already doing, you know, uh, automated ads, like you know, generative AI ads from your product and other, and your listing and everything like that. It's going to yeah. be so easy, like one click to say, yeah, I want this ad on Amazon prime in this region. And there you go. Yeah. And I mean, more and more, like, I think Amazon even has um, like a, yeah, generative AI self-service type of thing to where advertisers of all sizes can, you know, go in there. Here's my products. Here's my website, make me an ad. And I want to spend $500 or something. It's, it's really easy. They're making it really mm -hmm. seamless. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, all of that is really cool. Um, so yeah, that's the one I would say for CTV. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I would say the gotcha on digital out of home is that measurement is more difficult. The reason being the device is not owned by the consumer, right? So there's no like identity attached to this device that, that also matches with a person. So it's harder for you to understand who is exposed to the ad. Mm -hmm. If you think about a billboard that's static, that gets easier because then you can use things like mobile, you know, identity to track who's been in that like general radius while the ad was up. Um, but in today's world, a lot of the ads are programmatic, so it, it's even more complicated. You have to try to like match timestamps to exposed to like mobile data. So it's, it's a lot to it. So you've got to really consider, you know, the scale there to get mm -hmm. much measurement out of it. So mm -hmm. for that reason, I still kind of recommend 
you know, for out of home, it's more kind of an awareness play or it's some really like, cool, relevant ad that just totally makes sense for the, the place or the venue that you're in. Right. Right, right. And or you're using something like media mix modeling or something like that to understand overall lift as you add different components to your marketing mix. And if you see a bump, then you know something's happened because if you can't attribute it any other way. And as you make changes, you see changes in that data. And so you have a sense of how that works. It's not direct. It's not deterministic. It's not, you know, uh, hardcore linked, but it is real if you get it right. And so if we look at audio, safe. go ahead. What's <laughs> I that? said, and it's privacy safe to do it that way. hundred percent, hundred percent. Exactly. So if we look at audio, whether that's digital radio or podcasting, what are some of the gotchas there as people move into that? Yeah, that one, I think the gotcha is there's still kind of more work to be done on the tech side before it reaches its full potential. Like you were mentioning a lot of where you consume audio is in your vehicle. Um, mm-hmm. Folks like Sirius XM, you know, we're trying to break into being kind of the operating systems of vehicles, et cetera. It hasn't all really played out the way that they all wanted it to. So it, Even it's Apple still, can't. yeah, it's <laughs> Manufacturers still are pushing very back. confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's still pretty confusing. So when it comes to audio, like I'd say stick to kind of tried and tested methods there. And then if I, if I, if I can access audio in the platforms I already use, I think it's a performance marketer that that makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have to have a big budget for audio to step outside of that, really, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool. Well, we hit some of the measurement stuff when we looked at the gotchas. And, you know, isn't that the case usually for marketers, right? Yeah. Like, you yeah. can spend money very easily. <laughs> uh, let's sure. do what we can around some of this measurement for non-traditional digital advertising, though. If we look at CTV, we know the measurement is getting better there. We know there's there's things that, that have been added there, and there's some some clicks that are starting to happen, and that's yeah. new and requires certain technology and all that stuff. We know you mentioned QR codes, which, you know, it's funny. I heard about QR codes, a funny thing from a marketer about half a year ago, is they did a lift test on them, and people mostly didn't use the QR codes. They didn't take out their phone and their camera and look at the QR code and stuff like that. But they saw a lift in ads that had a QR code, Hmm. regardless of whether it was used. They saw a lift and it somehow subliminally, subconsciously, it was like, there's a thing to be done here. Yeah. It's Uh, an invitation to, to, you know, engage, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, Oh, if you see the QR code, you're like, Oh, they want me to do something. This is not just like a a background ad. This is like some sort of call to action. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I've seen that too. And it's like, no, most people don't scan the QR codes, but it, in the same way that like brand lift studies are, you know, measurement of a small group reflecting a larger group, it, it's kind of like that. You know what I mean? It's a sample size yes. um, that can help you with overall measurement. Is it perfect? No. Can it help? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, maybe let's do, maybe let's chat about audio for a moment. And, and I think you hit that one. I mean, you, you kind of go to tried and true. You might have the coupon code, you might have a lift study or something like that. You might have an incrementality study, some other things like that. Uh, anything else to think about there? Um, I, I still really think that podcast host read ads are, are good ads and a good use of money. I think that's kind of, that's outside of the scope of like programmatic. It's more of something that you, you do directly with either the host or the, the a company that kind of runs a bunch of, of podcasts, but the power there is just like undeniable. It's like, mm-hmm. it is spot on the audience that you want to hit. So mm-hmm. if, if within your target audience, there are podcasts that make sense, I think that's a, a good use of money. And, um, yeah, you you know you're hitting the right people, you know. And and if it's host read and it's not too long, people don't go start looking at the phone. Where's that thirty second skip button? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, it's and um, a lot of the podcasts I listen to, they're actually companies that I'm like, oh, interesting. I like ha- I didn't know about that one yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I might mm-hmm. check that out. It's like it's super super relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, and when ads are relevant, they add to the experience versus like taking away from it. So yeah. that's a good yeah. to me a good example of what you really want out of advertising. Cool. Let's hit the last one then digital out of home. What are some of the gotchas there? Yeah. Or, sorry, we got the gotchas. What about the measurement there? Yeah, the measurement it's getting, it's getting better. There's some more advancement kind of made around Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi networks and, and things like that, as well as um, just 
a larger scale of, of more directional kind of cross device type of measurement that can be interesting. Um, and I think if the more and more there are things like QR codes or more expected ways to react with, you know, out of home, the more people will interact with them. Um, and I think the other key to remember is for digital out of home, and I hadn't mentioned this yet, but today it means a lot more than billboards and Times Square. It means mm -hmm. like the TVs that are in the bars and restaurants or, mm -hmm. um, you know, the TVs that are in the grocery stores. So the in action the there. Restroom. In yeah. the restroom. In the restroom, yeah. That, yes, that, that's different. But above the urinal, <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I can't. I can't be pro that. I don't think. <laughs> um, yeah, that's too far. There is such thing. Um, but but yeah, and, and what that means though is that like if you are doing this certain kind of advertising and you are seeing you know your product pick up with those kind of venues and things, then um, you can get measurement that way. So mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. just more creative ways and different. Um, ways to to get measurement, if you will, um, mm -hmm. when doing out of home. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I like that. And I think that one of the side reactions or results of something like ATT coming into the iOS mobile space where trackability got significantly impaired is that marketers learn a lot more about how to measure when it's hard to measure. Um, yep. and triple M got a lot more relevant incrementality, got a lot more relevant lift studies, got a lot more relevant. And so you can use these things in a lot of cases, regardless of what technology or, or what platform you're, you're putting Absolutely. your ads out on. And that's yeah. cool. And that's interesting. They do require some new skill sets, but there are some platforms that enable that as well. Uh, I think Singular does as well. I'm joking. Of course they do. <laughs> but in any case, <laughs> this podcast brought to you by, no. <laughs> there you go. Here. I was right there. <laughs> this has been cool. This has been interesting. This has been kind of fun. This is uh, dealing with some platforms that I don't usually deal with. Although CTV, we're seeing more and more and more. Uh, yeah. But I haven't really talked to too many people on digital out of home. Haven't talked to too many marketers or experts on podcasting and audio as well. I really do appreciate your insight and your time. Absolutely. Yeah, this has been really fun. And yeah, I think CTV is the easiest one to use, the easiest ways to measure it. Measure it. And yeah, it's a, it's a good solution for performance marketers. And there's many platforms that support it. Cool. 